The heart, it's a muscle pumping blood through the body. It keeps us alive. It's also the organ we associate with love, love of parents, a spouse and our children. And that's why it's so important to be heart healthy. Often we're inspired to make those changes for our loved ones. Experts say there will be nearly 24 million deaths by the year 2030, all connected to cardiovascular disease. Yeah, you can't control some of the risks to your heart health, but others you can. It is not an easy thing at all, and I, I deal with that, you know, almost daily. For the next half hour, we'll share stories from people right here in Alabama who've had a change of heart for themselves. Just gotten to the point where um, it had me sleep, feeling sluggish, sleeping at night. I don't want to take a medication every day. And for the people who hold their hearts. She stayed on me. She did, and I just didn't have enough sense to listen. And I wanted to lead um, a good example for my kids. Keep him on board and help him set him up for success for the next day. For some, that success comes with a clear mind. Yoga and meditation are the number one sources for reducing stress. For others, it's all about releasing tension and aggression. It's just kind of that rush of, you know, when you're when you are anxious and you're trying to relieve that. And Join us as we take a deeper personal look into what makes our hearts skip a beat. WVTM 13 Chronicle presents Change of Heart. Terrence Belzer has always loved to cook. How and what he cooks has changed a lot recently. Started out on the food, cut out a lot, came up with a diet plan, what were really working best. We changed up a lot, you know, um, just to see what was working. And, started doing low carbs. He's lost more than 60 pounds in just three months by eating right, and he did it for his heart. Oh yeah, I was worried. I was worried, big time. His wife was worried too. When you're big like that, it's physical, but it plays a part on you emotionally and mentally too. Katie says Terrence was lethargic and sluggish and couldn't keep up with his active two and four year old sons, but that's changed along with his waistline. Now that he's lost that, he's more active. He wants to get off that couch. Let's go to the park, let's go. So I've seen that emotional and mental change along with the physical. It comes with sacrificing. Uh, giving up something to get something. and um, But the results that you get out of it is worth it. Now, eating grilled chicken, fish, and fresh vegetables is not a diet. It's the Belzer's new normal. I like the way we eat, you know. The food is amazing now. You know, the vegetables. Didn't know how much it was good until I started eating it every week. <laughs> Your body gets to a point where it wants it more and more. Now, his heart is healthier. Terrence says he made this big change for the lady who won his heart almost 10 years ago. Oh man, it's just, just been a blessing to um, really have somebody with you that supports you, love you and build together. You know, love don't have no color at all, but you feel it, yeah. you know it, you know it. And seeing the change in Terrence motivated Katie as well. I'm seeing the results, I'm like, oh no, he can't be cuter than me, I gotta get, <laughs> I gotta get with it too, right. so. Then plus just having that accountability with him yeah. and having something to do together is what's key. We're doing this together. I mean, we just, like I say, this is about a lifestyle and uh, a legacy that we're trying to continue to run and lead for our families. We do want him around. <laughs> we do want daddy around, I want my husband around for quite a while, so. And I plan on keeping him. <laughs> healthy eating is the first step in a healthy lifestyle. And as you just saw with Terrence, a byproduct of that for many people is weight loss. And that'll help your heart too. Now, if you're trying to improve your diet, doctors recommend you start small. You don't have to eliminate all sugar, all carbs, and all meats on day one. Just try one meal a day or one meal a week even that you're thinking about making particularly healthy, increasing you know, whole grains, high fiber foods, fruits and vegetables, maybe making that meal or that the meals in that day to be meatless and more plant-based. There are all kinds of great resources and websites out there with recipes that can make the transition to a healthy diet pain-free. You can start with the American Heart Association. Their website is right there. Rain or shine, Stephanie Coffey is gonna get in her morning run. That's the new Stephanie. Running is just one of several healthy habits she's adopted over the past year or so. I didn't want to be skinny. It wasn't about losing weight. It was about being able to get out and live without having to be out of breath, 
and just try to get healthy. Her wake up call was three years ago. She was only 40 when her doctor put her on medication to lower her blood pressure. At the end of 2018, I was in the kitchen and I was cooking and I turned quickly and I just felt faint. And um, I realized Shortly after that, I looked at my Fitbit app, and in that moment, my heart rate had just spiked for no reason and then come back down. And so that really got me thinking about heart health and what can I do to change this. The pills helped, but she decided to take control of her heart health. When I am running, um, I feel like that my heart is just cleaning everything out and doing what it needs to do. This little guy, her five-year-old son Malcolm, was her inspiration. The thought of him being raised by someone else or me not being there for him the way he needs me, that's really not the promise that I made to the Lord. We have playtime all the time now. That's all he wants to do. I have an only child and I am his playmate. That love in her now healthier heart keeps her running, even when she's worn out and sore. And this small device keeps her on track. I really started watching my Fitbit and looking at my resting heart rate. My resting heart rate was in the 80s. That was way too high. And now, if I wake up in the morning and I look at my heart rate and it's at 58, I know that's a good day. Stephanie took control of her health and she was able to get off that blood pressure medication. But doctors say for some people, no matter how healthy they get, they're gonna have to stay on those meds. The key is to keep your blood pressure in check. You have to know your numbers. And here are some more numbers you need to know. Your cholesterol level, there are two kinds. HDL and LDL. LDL is a uh, low density lipoprotein and essentially it is what we uh, call in lay terms bad cholesterol. And we know that LDL plays a role in the blockages that form in blood vessels that lead to heart attacks and strokes. By all accounts, Gary Ryan really shouldn't be here. I was short of breath, woke up, it was Monday morning, and I didn't uh, really think a lot about it. Typical man. Wife said I need to go to the doctor, but I wouldn't go. By the end of the day, he was in the emergency room near death. The doctor there said he was having a heart attack, and within hours, his kidneys had shut down, his liver was failing, he had pneumonia, and he was septic. Doctors told his family they didn't think he'd pull through, but he did. If it wasn't for the good Lord, I wouldn't be here. That is plain and simple. He gives all the credit to God. He says the fact that he's back home, back at work, and almost back to normal six months later is nothing short of a miracle. This is really opened my eyes. I've, I've been given a second chance. Now he's in cardiac rehab, and he's given up a lot, including the occasional beer. Lisa, I might drink a six-pack a year okay. during the summer. Mm -hmm. That was, and that would have been, that would have been it. Drinking in moderation reduces your risk of a heart attack, but after what Gary went through, he's quit all alcohol. He's cut back on his salt intake. He's getting more exercise, too. He's made these major changes for the woman who's held his heart since ninth grade, his wife, Julie. What I went through was, Lisa, was really nothing to what my brother and my wife went through because they was watching me die. I've been married 43 years. She's my rock. I put her through a lot on this. Well, it's, I don't want it to happen again. Doctors say drinking in moderation is fine. For women, that's one drink a day. For men, two drinks per day. So what is a drink? Well, that is one beer, one glass of wine, or one shot of alcohol. And no, they don't recommend you save them up all week so you can have seven drinks on a Saturday night. Alcohol can be toxic to the myocardium cells, and that can reduce the pumping function or how strong the heart muscle is. If you're concerned at all about how much you're drinking and whether it's hurting your heart, just do what Gary is doing and don't drink at all. Improving your physical form also improves your heart health. Coming up, the woman dancing for her future. I did it because I was a mother of two who couldn't keep up with my kids. Her journey from fitness student to fitness instructor. It motivated me, it helped me, I had people supporting me. Plus, keeping secrets from those he loves most. I just don't want that to be how it all ends for me. The man hiding his addiction from his parents while watching their health decline. I do want my heart to be healthy because heart disease is a big part of genetics for my family. The decades long smoker who had a change of heart and called it quits for the last time.
Vermeer hasn't always been this fit. Dancing and finding a form of exercise that I love has changed my life. It's changed everything for me. Over the past several years, this Hoover resident has seen a lot of change. She had two daughters within two years. Then she quit her job to stay home with them. And like many busy moms who are taking care of kids in a home, her own health dropped pretty low on her list of priorities. It's so, so easy to be unhealthy. It is convenient to go through the drive through It is exhausting to go for a walk after work, after you already dealt with so much, but things just kind of start spiraling out of control. Before she knew it, she was 60 pounds overweight. She was having a hard time keeping up with the girls and she knew she had to put her own heart health first. That's when she joined the YMCA. So I needed something that I could do um, that was quick, burn a lot of calories, and had free childcare. <laughs> she discovered a love for Zumba and all the cardio dance classes. She started attending regularly and then she started teaching. I wanted to lead a good example for my kids and you know that's kind of what I instill with them with walking to school. Like I want them to know that exercise is very important. Um, it'll make them feel better. It made me feel better. And then the weight just kind of started coming off. She lost those 60 pounds by eliminating the I don't have time to work out excuse. Exercise is such a huge part of my life. You know, I schedule my appointments around my gym schedule. <laughs> She's showing how much she loves her family by making her own heart health a priority. I just feel so unbelievably lucky and blessed to have two healthy, wonderful little girls um, that I get to raise them and take care of them. I realize like I've got to make a change so I can be there with them as long as I possibly can. Doctors say you need to get a minimum of 150 minutes, that's two and a half hours, of at least moderate exercise every single week. That's getting your heart rate up enough that it's not easy to have a conversation. But you may have to start smaller than that and just try to lessen your sedentary time. That's the amount of time you're not moving at all. If we really, if look at healthy um, seniors in their 70s and 80s, they're moving around and they might not necessarily be going to the gym. They're just active. They you can break that 150 minutes up into three 50 minute workouts, five 30 minute workouts. Just try to keep it at 10 minutes or more. It's all good for your heart. Terry Hull's job is making people look their best. Looks good. Mm -hmm. But he hasn't always felt his best. I was huffing and puffing. He was a smoker for decades, something he knew was affecting his health. Just being able to walk down the street and walk back home and being winded, it really bothered me. He was addicted and he was embarrassed, so he hid that habit from his family and his clients, even though it consumed his life. It like controlled everything that we did. You know, if we were going somewhere, well, where was I gonna smoke? Where was I gonna, where was I gonna go to be away from people to do that? And he says he knew better. He had watched cigarettes steal his mother's health, and he had seen how that impacted her entire life. When she was diagnosed with her COPD, she laid him down that day and never smoked again. You know, so uh, I was very proud of her for that, but it took, you know, an act of God you know for that to happen. Yeah. You didn't want that to be you? I, I, I don't want that to be me. I mean it's it's really sad. It's a sad existence. His parents and his stepdad all died of COPD and heart disease. I do want my heart to be healthy because heart disease is a big part of genetics for my family. He kicked the habit once before his mom died. I quit smoking and my mother was so happy. But he started back and he couldn't bear to disappoint her, so he kept it a secret. Now he's been cigarette free for more than a year and he did it for his mom. I lied to her for a long time, you know, probably 10 years. And uh, you know, if I do this, I should do it for her. She'd be happy. Yeah, she would be, she really would be. It's certainly better to never start this habit, but quitting is going to help your heart no matter how long you've been smoking. Doctors say they can see the difference within weeks of kicking the habit. There's literally thousands of compounds within uh, cigarettes and, and uh, tobacco products that are particularly increasing your risk for heart attacks, strokes, and then for cancers. So Terry can feel good about the fact that he's quit for the last time.
releasing the rage. When you work in the medical profession, you do experience a lot of stress. Getting rid of that built up stress is a key component in keeping your heart healthy. And this has become a popular way to let out some aggression. It's just like a fun way to, to just come out and just relieve some stress. If a rage room isn't for you, try de-stressing with yoga. Doesn't matter what comes my way, life is still life. Boom, get back to my yoga practice the next day. And later, do you know your heart health risks? Do you know how to track them? Taking small steps to make sustained changes is one of the things I really try to recommend for everyone. Unfortunately, um, we're in a, a region of the country, namely the, um, the Southeast, that uh, tends to have worse outcomes from heart disease. Find out how to keep your heart on track. There are plenty of things in our day-to-day -day lives that can stress us out. And exhale. Yoga or meditation could be the stress antidote. Yoga and meditation are the number one sources for reducing stress. Some of the very first steps is just being able to be aware of what you're experiencing, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. High stress is one of the leading controllable risk factors for heart disease, heart attack, and stroke. So keeping calm and staying zen is important for your heart health. It's like going into the gym and you know training with weights and you get stronger and stronger. And so it's the same with yoga practice and you can handle more and more. The nervous system is stronger. But if that's just not for you, Maybe this is. The Rage Room in Huntsville is billed as a place to let out your aggression by breaking stuff. They come in here and they break stuff and they let off steam. That really seems to help them. They come out of here smiling and like uh, they feel like a weight has been lifted off their shoulders. It seemed only fitting that I would take a few whacks at a television. But crushing glass bottles and cups was also pretty satisfying. Those were my favorite because you could slam the um, baseball bat into them, and when they didn't break, then you could hammer them on the floor. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Melissa Byram says she has a stressful job as a medical assistant, so this trip to the rage room was just what she needed. It's kind of like a rush, but it was kind of like exercise all at the same time. A little different and a lot louder than this. but apparently just as effective. Stress can lower our immune system. It can cause headaches. It can make us moody, irritable, and anxious. It can even lead to insomnia. So it's not surprising, it can also affect our heart. Stress triggers the production of uh, hormones uh, in our uh, bodies, uh, and those hormones in high levels uh, are not good for our blood vessels and our heart. Whatever reduces your stress level without hurting someone else, <laughs> works for us. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in the U.S., accounting for about one of every three deaths in 2016. Family history doesn't doom someone to bad um, um, health outcomes related to their heart. Taking control of your health, it's the change of heart you just might need, the tools to make your heart stronger. healthy is your heart? You know, most of us really don't know until we know it's not good. Doctors say it's important to know your risk of heart disease, heart attack, and stroke. So do you smoke? Do you get enough exercise? How much alcohol do you drink? How's your diet? Are you managing stress? Are you overweight? How's your blood pressure? And what about your cholesterol numbers? Really, you can do a lot by knowing your numbers and knowing if they're creeping up and then making some changes around those numbers, your lifestyle can really make a big impact. Culturally, we like our food, we like it cooked a certain way, uh, but it uh, does not serve us well. Of course, family history plays a part in your risk too, as well as your age, gender, and other health issues, but those things you can't control. Cardiologists say you have to concentrate on those factors you can. There are plenty of online tests, questionnaires, and calculators to help you gauge your heart health, and we have those for you at WVTM13.com on our app and on our Facebook page, so check it out. Now, I'm always looking for unique stories and amazing people here in Alabama. If you have a Chronicle idea, let me hear from you. Until next time, I'm Lisa Crane for WVTM13 Chronicle.